I don't see racist headlines. If somebody throw, throws a banana at me, it's a direct reference to me being a monkey. Reports of discrimination around football in England have grown for six consecutive years. Six years. It's 2019. We're supposed to have moved past this. But with the rise of the far right, discrimination is more prevalent than ever. It's almost unavoidable. This issue doesn't just affect players. I'll, I'll, send, I'll send some... There's no reason why I'll send some money to your family in Africa. It happens even when to the presenters and the people going out and talking to fans after games and before games. The truth is one of the things that we experience from doing this for a couple of years, of course, multiple years, is that racism all the time. Malcolm Gladwell, author of Blink, The Power of Thinking Without Thinking, covers implicit bias at length in his book. Our attitudes towards things like race or gender operate on two levels. First of all, we have our conscious attitudes, and secondly, the unconscious level. These are the immediate automatic associations that tumble out before we've even had time to think. We don't deliberately choose our unconscious attitudes, and we may not even be aware of them. The giant computer that is our unconscious silently crunches all the data it can from the experiences that we've had, the people we've met, the lessons we've learned, the books we've read, the movies we've seen, and so on, and that forms an opinion. Malcolm explained in his book that we are shaped by the things that we read and that we see and that we consume on a daily basis. Now tell me this, look at these articles, one of a young white footballer who's bought a house for his mum, another a young black footballer who's bought a house for his mum. This is the same publication in England producing an almost identical story, except one has negative connotations. Why is that? Raheem Sterling may be one of the best football players on the planet right now, a young, black, English football player at the top of his game. But his story isn't only being written by his feet on the pitch, it's being shaped and written by newspapers up and down the length and breadth of England. Obscene Raheem, love rat, footy idiot, tired Raheem, prem rat of the Caribbean. His car's dirty, his car's dirty. He's rich, he's young, he's black. People have a problem with that. He's either shopping at EasyJet in Poundland or his cars are too expensive. He spends too much or too little. One of the worst things that happened last season was at Stamford Bridge in the Premier League. Raheem Sterling was on the end of what can only be described as truly despicable racist abuse. Is this person's opinion? Is it being informed by those articles that we're reading in the British press? Is it deeper than that? I'll let you decide. It's about speaking um, what you've experienced and you know some people probably shied away from that but um, I'm a person when I do feel um, that something's not quite right I, I want to speak about it, I want uh, people to see it from my perspective and I think that's the best way forward. He responds, he's a role model, he's an activist now, not because he wants to be, because he's being forced to be. Education is the key to beating discrimination. It may be too late for some generations, but it's not too late for our children. Black players, white players, blue players, green players, whatever colour your skin is, we have to clamp down it as players. The police have to be firmer. The referees have to deal with it. There has to be a punishment for that.